I find that there's two camps of people when they talk about refactoring. There's people who go, you know, refactoring just means tidying it up a bit, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And if you do any more than that, you're adding too much complexity. And then there's people who just go ham and add a load of complexity. And it basically boils down to a misunderstanding of what the point is. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it'll be interesting to see how that evolves as we go through this, is that we start talking about why are you refactoring? What benefit does it give you? And when should you do it? And I think there's a lot of misconceptions in and around that topic, right? I think a lot of people think it means either make the code easier to read, mm -hmm. just that, or that it means you're, you're basically trying to make as many small classes as humanly possible. And obviously, that's not the right answer either, right? Like, it's, there's, a, there's a neat middle ground you can walk, and it comes down to the fact that there are a million different tools at your disposal, decoupling classes. And if you just use one solution for all of them, you'll end up with just the same problem nested in different ways, like the singleton, right? A singleton in and of itself can be fine, but a singleton kind of invading your code base is not fine. So it comes down to using the right tool in the right amount at the right problems, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, that's why a lot of questions that we get in the Discord, um, by the way, if you're not on our Discord server, check that out. A lot of those questions we have to answer with, well, it just depends, you know, because honestly, yeah. all answers Very unsatisfying. Are <laughs> yeah. I, I always say that, I say, I know this is an unsatisfying <laughs> answer. And I, I, love, I love the phrase, how long is a piece of string? Because I just think that really sums mm -hmm. up a lot of the programming question. Yeah. It, people, are, people ask you, hey, how long is this piece of string? You're like, what piece of string? And what, that's just a general, like, that doesn't mean anything. Like, <laughs> what? So a lot of programming questions boil down to, how should I do X? And it's like, well, what platform are you on? How big is the project? And, you know, how long is the life cycle of the project? And is it going to extend in certain directions? And there's no direct answer. There is a series of tools, and you should learn how to use the tools and what they're for. And then when you hit a problem, you'll be better equipped to apply the right ones to the right problems. Yeah, yeah. And every answer is nuanced. And it's interesting, too, uh, you, you just brought up a very particular point that it took me a while to wrap my mind around because, you know, I was the, I was all, I've always been the kind of developer that I, I almost want to refactor just to refactor. But when you think about, like, what is the life cycle of a, of a project? Uh, an example of this is I'm working on a, a very small VR project uh, at work. And I know that this is a one and done thing. It's It's simply a prototypical type deal where we just want to get some cool looking demo to show off to some people and that's it it's, not, it's never going to go anywhere else i mean i it's it's literally been stated that we don't want to take this anywhere else so why would i go to the trouble of refactoring my code i'm going to do my best to make it as clean and easy to read as possible the first time i write it but any hacky things that i do i'm not going to go to the trouble of trying to over architect it and it's like now i you know as i'm more experienced i can look at code that I know is for a project that has a very short life cycle. And I can reasonably say, I don't need to touch this anymore. I can let it live as it is, which is not in the best state. Yeah, because let's, let's be real. Like the, the reason you refactor is because something is hard to maintain and manage. Mm -hmm. That's usually the main point of it. Like you're, you're refactoring it because you're either estimating, it's either hard to work with or you're estimating this is not finished and you want to refactor it so the next piece is plug in easily. So a good example of this, there is a kind of refactoring where you take an old project and you want to refactor it. And the reason you tend to do that is because someone asked you to add new features to an old project and you don't have any idea what the current project is doing. So the refactoring is acting as a form of documentation. You're going through the code to find out what it's doing to split it up into workable chunks. So the point of refactoring in that instance is in preparation for adding new features. Mm -hmm. The second kind of refactoring is in my mind at least is if you're working on a uh, kind of more test driven approach it's the red green refactor it's where you are refactoring a small chunk so we're not talking about application scale we're talking about i built a little piece of code i will make it work i will add some features to it i will make sure it works and then i'll refactor it and see can i make it cleaner than i originally wrote it but maintain it having the same features that it used to and they're both technically the same thing but the point of them is one is to basically allow you to tidy up something that you purposely wrote badly because mm -hmm. the point is that you're doing it in small iterative cycles. And the other one is trying to understand the code base. And realistically, if you do the second one, you don't need to do the first one. And that's sort of the point, right? Like if you can do things in small incremental chunks, you don't need to refactor at a giant scale and have to go through like a three month long project of just refactoring an existing project. Yeah. It's interesting. You, you know, you brought the refactoring and test driven development. Um, and 
funnily enough, the sometimes the I mean, you with TDD you do write like a poor implementation first. Like if if you had a test that expected the result to be ten, you could have a function that literally returns ten. You know, you know, obviously it doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't want to do that. But you know, when you first get the test running, you know, the cycle is uh, what is it? Fail. Fail pass refactor, I think is what the red, red, there's red green refactor and then red green the... refactor, yeah. So basically, you get it to fail. You write your test. It fails because there's no code that's implemented. Then you implement it with like the dumbest possible code, meaning like you return a, a static value. And then the refactor is where you go in and you can say, okay, I'm going to take that static value. I know that's not right. I'm going to refactor it into like a parameter on the method or something like that. Or, you know, so yeah, it's it, refactoring is such, even in itself, it's now that I'm thinking about it, it's funny. Refa there's so much to talk about in refactoring and yeah. contextually as well. Like, and I, and I think as well, like a lot of people, like here, here's the funny <laughs> thing in my mind about refactoring. A lot of complaints you hear people say about the idea is that when you refactor a system, you're adding complexity to it. They're mm. going, well, it doesn't need all that complexity. Well, if you take the red green refactor approach from a test sort of test-driven angle, the refactoring happens behind a boundary you've just drawn. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is you build a system which is person, like say you've got a, a class, that doesn't make, I'm trying to find something, I was going to say a class, like a school, school like classroom, <laughs> and having a class called classroom. Oh, anyway, no. yeah. <laughs> I immediately started with complexity. Educational here, anyway. center facility? No, that's terrible. <laughs> so so say, you, say you had a... Um, grades right for this classroom we'll say. and you have a classroom object and you say get grades now the first version of that could just be an eternal list stores them when you return them and that, that'll work right you just kind of like charles was saying you just return physically hard-coded answers to those questions um the refactoring could be adding a load of other stuff in there and sort of over time extracting out a collaborator and turning it into a repository and then attaching it to a database but whatever that was at the front is still only seeing get grades. So the point of that boundary line is to say, this is the feature set I would like to exist at this boundary line. So all of that extra complexity you're seeing should only be seen if you're already inside of it, right? That's like, like for example, your mobile phone through each generation is getting more complicated. All of the extra pieces inside of it are getting smaller and more connected. And the reason why cameras are moved around and why we have notches and stuff now are to allow for more important and interesting changes to parts. But you don't see that because it's all hidden under that layer underneath your phone. Your interface to your phone is still the same thing. It's still a screen with buttons and a camera and that kind of thing. So even though conceptually people are improving and refactoring the code behind your phone, you don't see it. And so I don't really buy that argument that it's making your code more complicated. It might make it more complicated for somebody managing the code after you if they don't understand what's going on. But even that, I think, is a spurious argument because the whole point of um, design patterns and, and that sort of mental, mental sort of approach to things is there are named solutions to known problems. Mm -hmm. So it should be less complicated to say, this is the repository inside the persistence layer, which may not mean much to some of you, but to me, if someone says that, I get a lot of information out of that sentence. I know what the architecture is. I know what the boundary line is. I have good estimates for how things should look. I can I could map the idea of what they just told me from three words because they're using known terminology for an abstraction layer. I would know a lot less if they said something like, here is my stuff getter class, which has a bunch of stuff behind it. And I have to now guess every single step of that direction. What are they using? How are they separating it? What are they getting things? Are they using any kind of mapping objects? I don't know any of this information, but I would if I knew that they were using sort of standard practices and refactoring approaches, right? Yeah, you have a language that you know you understand that you you, you can speak and and makes it it takes away the complexity, even though it isn't. Technical. Listen.